Welcome to our second Zoom lesson for sixth grade math. As a reminder, my name is Miss Green, and I am really excited to jump into Unit 8, Lesson 5 today, which is Area Applications. Before we start, quick reminder of what you will need for class today. You will need a piece of paper and something to write with. You will also need your classwork, which is in Google Classroom. Your teacher will let you know if you should be taking notes on paper or in your Google Classroom. So you can go ahead and pause the video now if you need to, to get those directions. The next is just as a reminder, you should be in what I'm calling a distraction-free zone. So if your phone is out, please put it away and make sure you are in a quiet space where you can focus and concentrate. Take the next 20 seconds to do that. Now, my expectations for your work as we're going through this is that anything you see on the screen, you should be adding to your notes according to your teacher's directions. Again, your teacher might tell you to write it down. They also might tell you to write it in your classwork doc. And if you're writing it down, make sure your handwriting is neat and organized. I want to remind us quickly where we have been and where we are going. Yesterday's lesson, we talked about how to find the area of a trapezoid. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how we can apply area to real world problems, and we're gonna be solving even more complex geometry problems later in the unit. Now, to get us started, I want us to think about all of the different shapes that we've learned and how to find the area of them. So on my screen, you can see a chart where I list shapes and I list their area formulas. Go ahead and pause the video and make sure you have all of these formulas in your notes because they'll be handy when you're doing today's practice. Now I want us to look together at this problem. It says, which of these scenarios require us to find the area? So I'm not actually solving any of these. I'm just deciding, do I need to find the area here or is it actually something else? We're going to go through each of these choices one by one, and I'm going to talk you through how I determine whether or not I was finding the area. The first scenario says, Fran is putting a fence around her garden and needs to figure out how many feet of fencing she needs. Now the question I need to ask myself is, am I finding the area here or not? I see that Fran is putting a fence around her garden. That tells me that I need to measure the distance around the shape of her garden in order to find the fencing. I know the area is the amount of space inside of a two-dimensional figure. So I know that this actually does not mean that I need to find the area. I actually need to find the perimeter here. And I find the perimeter by adding all the sides. Now let's look at the next scenario. It says, Alonzo is painting his wall and needs to figure out how many square feet he will be painting. Again, I need to ask myself, am I measuring the amount of space inside of a two-dimensional figure? What do you think? Do you think we're finding the area? If you thought yes, you were correct. We are finding the area in this problem. The key things that helped me to determine that are that he's painting the wall, so I know he is filling out the space inside the shape. The second is I see the units of square feet, and I know that area is always measured in square units. Now let's go to the third scenario. The third scenario says, Shannon is filling her fish tank with water and needs to figure out the capacity of the tank. Hmm, I'm filling something up, but there's something different about this problem. If you thought back to your lessons from last year when you learned volume, you might realize that a fish tank is actually three-dimensional. That means that this is not the area. The amount of space inside of a three-dimensional figure is volume. If you thought that, you are exactly on track. So this actually does not mean I'm finding the area. 
To solve this problem, I would have to find the volume. Volume and area are different, so I cross this one out. The last scenario says, Ayana is putting a rug over her entire living room floor and needs to know the number of square feet she is covering. What do you think? Do you think we're finding the area? If you said yes, you were exactly right. Again, I am covering a two-dimensional shape here, therefore I am finding the area. Answer choices B and D were problems in which I needed to find the area. A and C were not. In A, I had to find the perimeter, and in C, I had to find the volume. That brings us to our question for today. In general, how do I know if a word problem is helping me find the area? Another way to phrase that is, how do I know if a word problem is telling me to find the area? We're about to stamp our key point for today. Make sure you get this down in your notes. It says, real world scenarios involving covering a shape require us to use area. Pause the video here and make sure you write this down in your notes. As we saw earlier, when we were painting a shape or we were covering something on the ground, we were finding the area. We also saw that there were some keywords in the problem about units that gave us a hint, but we're not gonna just use the units. We're always going to think about is this problem involving covering a two-dimensional shape? And if the answer is yes, then we're finding the area. Now we're going to look at a problem together. It says, Bob the Builder is constructing a lot with the shape and dimensions below. Part A, before starting to build, he ropes off the entire lot to ensure no one walks on it during construction. How many feet of rope does he need? The first thing I'm going to ask myself is, does this question require me to find the area? And I'm going to use my key point to help me. What do you think? Do you think we're finding the area to answer part A? If you said, no, we are not finding the area, you are exactly right. We are actually finding the perimeter here. And the reason why is because it says he ropes off the entire lot. That means he's putting a rope around the entire lot, not covering it. So how do I find the perimeter of this shape? I know I find the perimeter of any shape by adding up all its sides. So why don't you take a minute right now, find the perimeter of this shape. If you added up 30 plus 27 plus 50 plus 27, you did the problem exactly right, and you should have gotten 134 feet as the perimeter. Now let's look at part B of this question. It says, after roping off the lot, he covers the entire lot with a layer of cement. How much cement does he need? Again, is this area or not? What do you think? If you thought, yes, this is area, you were exactly correct. And the thing that gave it away for me was where it says he covers the entire lot. That tells me that I need to find the area to solve this problem. Now, in order to find the area, I need to ask myself two questions. First, what is the shape? And second, what is the formula for the area of that shape? Pause the video right now and answer those two questions on your own. If you identified this shape as a trapezoid, you are exactly right because it has two parallel sides and four sides. And you can remember from yesterday, the formula for the area of the trapezoid is one half times height, parentheses, base one plus base two. Make sure you have that formula written on your paper. Now it's your turn to solve. Take, pause the video and take one minute using what we learned yesterday to find the area of this trapezoid. Go. Here's the work that I did to find the area of the trapezoid. Notice how I wrote the formula first. 
I substituted in all of my numbers and I simplified. As a reminder, the height here is 25 because it is the vertical distance between the two bases. If you wrote the height as 27, make sure you update your paper so that your height is 25. Pause the video now to make sure you have this work in your notes. Now your teacher is about to release you in to do some practice problems. Before that happens, I wanted to reiterate your CFS for top quality work. Make sure your problem is annotated with margin notes to provide additional meaning. I added in this green highlighted part because something you'll want to do, which you noticed I did, was always ask yourself, do I need to find the area? And remember, use your key point to help you. The second is model is drawn accurately and labeled. Third, Plan is created if it's a multi-step problem, which a lot of the problems you will do today are. Fourth, formula is written. Again, I put some questions here that you should always ask yourself when you see a shape. Ask yourself, what is the shape? And what is the formula for the area of this shape? You might be finding the area of trapezoids today, but you might see shapes like rectangles, triangles, and parallelograms. So that chart we copied in the beginning of the class is going to be really helpful. Next, all calculations are shown, neatly organized and labeled. And last but not least, answer statement is provided. I'm now about to hand it over to your teacher who is going to give you other expectations that they wanna set before independent practice. Thank you guys for your attention during today's video and I look forward to continuing the rest of the unit with you.